Hello and welcome to the Beginner's Handbook. I'm Jordan. I'm Jamie. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about gremlins in games. So, yeah. what is a gremlin in a game? Well, a gremlin just trying not to in name a game. any characters or any people <laughs> yeah. that we know. I think so. Yeah, yeah, I'm just quickly going through the filter process and our, our usual way of giving people anonymity. We're going to have to two-factor authentication that and like give them a nickname for the nickname. Yeah. Just to be sure. But, I don't um, even use nicknames, so I forget to use them. I think yeah. I've slipped up names in the past. Oh, I just yeah. don't even bother. Don't yeah. even bother. So, it's all right. It's people I don't know. So yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. It's all right. So it's clear who's <laughs> who's been talking about this. Well, them. Let's, let's be blunt. Talking about them, you gossip. But a gremlin, so not a creature. That's not what we're talking about. We are using this as a term for someone or something that's going to give you a problem that's going to potentially derail a game or is going to just suck the living joy out of it like listening to the last two minutes of me speak there and the person or situation that's threw that up they don't necessarily know that they're doing it they yeah, um, yeah, that's that's it. So particularly we're speaking about the characters um, that is actually going to be maybe problematic. I've certainly had my fair share of them in games. I've played some with the consent of other people. I wouldn't just play somebody that's wanting to wind up a part, party of people. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've certainly had players who, whether they're new, they're not new, maybe they're drunk at the table, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But I've had characters and players, but specifically we've had characters who have made life difficult for people in either the games I've ran or the games I've played. So that's particularly what we're speaking about today. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think we could just open straight up and ask those who are listening and are watching, have you ever had a player, sorry, not a player, a character in a game, even if the player's the best, like the heart of gold, etc., mm -hmm. but their character, it makes you want to throttle them. Maybe they're too noble. Maybe it's one of these like lawful good paladins that just grind your gears um, it'd be interesting to know if it was in character grief as mm. well rather than just being you as a player getting upset at somebody's character yeah I'm just laughing to myself <laughs> so for anybody who's listening and doesn't have the benefit of watching there Jordan literally mimed strangling someone as he talked about that there and that wasn't that wasn't pre-rehearsed that was just that involuntary reflex when he thought about something there so I'm very intrigued to figure out who it was you were thinking about oh, there. No, I, well, I won't come out but there's certainly a few that I've had in the whatever five six or whatever years we've played these games um, but I just treat it as a therapy session just to get it all out oh no it was too much it was too much but um, yeah so interesting for you people at home who have been playing games that have had that happen you've just had a character that's done either your character or your personal head in when you're trying to do stuff hmm. um, and as a GM actually I wonder if you've ever been proposed characters that maybe you didn't like the sound of I've been very guilty of this where I thought yeah this little campaign we're going to do is going to last three sessions and it'll be done so I'll let this person make a ridiculous character and it, the campaign ends up running for way more than you expected maybe a month two months a year whatever but the problem character or the gremlin in the game has mm -hmm. evolved because you allowed a lot of silly stuff you thought would never come up in the first place uh, i've done that on more than one occasion and to the to the players like you know to their defense that's my bad but uh, it certainly causes everybody grief including other players grief in later games when you're running long-term campaigns with unexpected psychopaths so uh yeah so that, that's the question i think would throw over to you so Yes, have you had any experience with gremlins in games? Yes, I have. Um, there's one rather prominent one I can think of. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know whether I want to kick off with that, though. I think that's a good finale piece to work our way up to. Okay. Well, so I've had quite a few, and I'd probably say one of the lighter ones, because the reality is... You know, just because you ha you're having issues with maybe either a character that someone is playing or the way they are playing the character, mm -hmm. you know, that doesn't mean that you're angry at the person, do you know what I mean, that's playing them. Um, although that it can be very easy to happen if you end up doing eight or nine weeks with this character that's doing your head in, um, particularly if they're doing everybody's hell everybody else's heads in. But uh, one of the kind of lighter cases we had of it was a guy that was a... Uh, 
He was playing a barbarian, and uh, he just... I mean, he was playing the character dumb, which is pretty standard for a barbarian, but uh, he, he would he would do everything in his power to, like, interrupt and, like, stop things you were doing. Like, any good plans you have, he would come in and, like, do the kind of blockhead yeah. approach and, like, st- steamroll your plan or, yeah. you know, if you're sneaking past the guards, he would walk up to them and try and speak to them and kill them with his axe. And the guy at the table was having a blast, but after about three months of it, you know, people were getting a bit like, man, this dude is doing our heads in. Is there anything we can give this character to make him smarter so the guy plays him in a way that makes it easier? Um, yeah. But it, it did actually end up becoming... That character ended up dying, and I wonder if it was a GM that decided that, to be honest, because he was a bit... He'd had enough, I think. But yeah. um, that's just a small example, but the reality is a character like that can scrape on people. Um, mm-hmm. Now, it's fun... If people are okay with it and they can do in character stuff that maybe bounces off each other. Yeah. But I think the kind of the setup around that, the context would need to be that people are one, comfortable doing that and two, like actually enjoying that process. Because I think I've mm-hmm. had it, I don't know if you've had it in some of our games, but I've seen it where that kind of inter character conflict and not pvp like we've talked about that in a different episode but not maybe as obvious as fighting each mm-hmm. other with swords and all that stuff but that kind of inter-character interpersonal conflict is something that you know and certainly for myself i'm not actually that interested in it i'm here to have a good time with a game a lot of the time mm-hmm. so um I, i'm not interested in it but i've seen what it looks like when people aren't interested in it but some people in a party or one person in a party wants to do that and it just becomes like a never-ending great um, and it's a yeah. shame because for the most part i don't think there's any players at least not in the last year maybe that i've played with that they've been problem players and you know everyone they're actually good it's the characters that tend to be just um obstructive to the game I would say but you know they're not yep. disrupting the table I don't even know if that it makes sense to me but I've just because I've seen a lot of it, it makes sense to me but yeah mm-hmm. yeah and I mean if it's a situation like that then I mean ultimately you can have characters that are going to be disruptive like you're saying but it's game specific you know, depending on how that well that's going to slot in, is it a one shot and everybody's just there to have fun? Nobody's taking yeah. it too serious, and then you've got again like the the non intelligent character walking straight up to guards or you know whatever it is that then causes chaos and you know throws up something that's funny or whatever. So you know, situation to situation is going to be dependent. Um, on whether that's an issue or not, but one thing like it's just popped into my head, like talking about that situation is there and then. I am assuming that for the game, everybody that was in that party was supposed to have known each other for whatever period of time. It wasn't that it's a group that's just been thrown yeah, together like, and all that kind of stuff. We've been playing yeah. for a few months at that point. So, and but that that's a small thing in a game. I'm, what I'm I meaning within the characters. Yeah, but yeah, even yeah. the character, well, kids, well, in person, we'd done various adventures. Like, mm-hmm. like as a group, we were around a few months. In the game, it'd be probably around the same between like mm-hmm. resting up between adventures and stuff. Yeah. Um, and the thing was like. You know, stealth up to guards, but you see, when you've spent two hours solving puzzles and actually getting near the end before you can actually sneak in, avoid all the fights, and solve the quest, mm-hmm. and a guy does it, you know, you've had months of this sort of stuff, it gets a bit like, come on. Yeah, yeah, um, but I, with that, right, at the end of the day, it's, it's not like it's a new group of characters no, that have been no. thrown together. And it's in not which a new case group you, of people either. Yeah, in which case you could go, well, maybe that would happen because of whatever reasons but <clears throat> if like in game time it's months later then you go right the character might be as dumb as a bag of rocks mm-hmm. but that's not going to affect his level of trust in the other people there so again you might be playing a character that is dumb that would potentially make some of those decisions that wouldn't necessarily be capable of formulating a 
cohesive plan mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that they don't trust the people that they're with and it doesn't mean that they don't trust their judgment and would go along with what they think so you know in a situation like that you've potentially got someone that go oh but the character would do this or you know whatever reasoning that they come up with but you know that's the flip side of it that at the end of the day they don't necessarily need to be making the decision their character could be going along with the majority or you know whatever so there's there's always there's always a way of getting your character to do something that's not necessarily a decision they would make there is there will be a way of figuring it out and justifying it yeah i mean that's the thing like that sort of example that was given it seems very minor right and i suppose it is to some degree but you know when that's happening all the time and people are a bit tired especially a campaign that i mean the, the actual person that was running that was actually getting a bit fatigued because this was like every week for a, a few months whatever it was probably three or four months i can't mm. remember exactly how long it was now because this was a wee while ago but um yeah it just becomes a thing where it's like everybody's a bit fatigued and that guy that had played the silly character it, it was mentioned to him about like, like just we're trying to get this bit of the game done so we can take a break <laughs> that was really what like the gm had said that to him and a lot of the, the stuff that he was throwing in and i suspect the gm was being very um generous with ourself and all that to get through that whole mm -hmm. fort without being seen and i suppose you could say well the gm should have just said no but you know i i, I do agree with the guy when he made the call to let the guy do it after him being told not to do it and then doing it anyway because he, he wants you still to have some form of agency he doesn't want to nick that from yeah, you yeah yeah actions so, have consequences so, and all that sort of so stuff. i agree with it too but you could, you could you know there's a few maybe points where that could have all been solved and are just stopped but you know the, the thing is as well like the group's close so it's not we don't want to kind of almost tell somebody to you know sit down and shut up you know because that wouldn't have felt good for the guy either I mean, he did feel bad for it after because everybody's like please it's half past 12 at night you know we want to get this game done this is like the last thing we've got to do um, so it's a tricky one I think because you know nobody was annoyed at the guy well I think people were annoyed at the guy that was playing the character but um you know, it was just a case of like, well, why don't we write in something that makes our guy a bit more, not even smarter, just sensible, you know, because mm -hmm. his wisdom is decent, just because his intelligence is low doesn't mean yep. that you don't have a clue what you're doing, mm -hmm. um, it just means you don't read that well. Um, but yeah, Basically, yeah, and again, that kind of ties back a little bit to the trust thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because then you go, well, you can play that off as instincts, you can play that off as again wisdom your judgment of a situation rather than your understanding of it mm -hmm. yeah and so that's like even another example i won't really go into it as much because it's a bit more obvious but um there's some kind of h historical period pieces that we've done in the past um with call of cthulhu with the same group and obviously with cthulhu a lot of it's in the 20s or it might even depending on if you're doing some of the later modern stuff or kind of semi-modern stuff, maybe back in the 60s, 70s. Um, but, you know, a lot of Call of Cthulhu has probably racism, probably sexism in it. You know, there's a lot of topics that, especially people that are into Call of Cthulhu, mm. they, they want to touch on that in their campaigns, especially if you do games like Cult or anything else that tends to be a bit more hardcore because, I mean, Call of Cthulhu gives itself like in a kind of serious, scary brand but it's it's really not that complicated you know they're really not that kind of edgy the way they promote mm -hmm. themselves but certainly there's people that have played their games that like to increase that factor yeah um but anyway it's one of the guys that tested out a call of cthulhu game set and it was like mrs zippy it was some murder mystery in the swamps i think it's mrs zippy um that has like the swamp lands and stuff i can't remember now um but uh, yeah anyway there was racism in it you know so and somebody was up and he was like yeah cool and he started blasting out just not in no slurs or anything but he was very close to it but it made people pretty uncomfortable because it was there was a basis and i can't remember the real case it was somebody that was murdered it was a race-based mm -hmm. thing um it's given me killers of the flower moon vibes even though it was not um native americans uh, mm -hmm. if you i won't go into what that is it's a native american thing and etc um but anyway it was yeah it was a bit it was a bit much like and a lot of people at the table you know 
regardless of their race or whatever, we're just a bit like, I don't know, I don't want to mm-hmm. dwell too much. We get that it's racist, but the guy that's running, uh, sort of running it, is mentioned the fact, yes, it's bad, and that's, and, then, and this guy's mm-hmm. in trying to role play it a bit, and he's trying to blend in with these guys. So, and it's just some of the stuff he's saying is a bit, it's a bit off brand, that's all. And it was mm-hmm. kind of uncomfortable. Now, the guy doesn't mean anything bad about him, we all know that, but. You know, maybe that was a GM thing. Maybe I mean, I'm you know, I didn't run that game, but as somebody who has run the game, I, that could have been something I mentioned beforehand. But yeah. it just didn't occur to me, to be fair. Um, and you could argue maybe the GM should have said, "Okay, guys," but this is a group we all know. But it kind of came out of the blue a bit with this character, and it made sense based on the backstory that he, he had. He, we all made our own characters, mm-hmm. um, but. Yeah, it was still a bit uncomfortable for folk and, you know, it's not the first time I've seen edgy gameplay or whatever for whatever theme, but I it just made people at the table uncomfortable and that was definitely a gremlin kind of in the game because it just made everybody be a bit like, I don't know, man, like that roleplay was a bit too, a bit too, a bit too deep, that's all. Yeah, um, yeah. Which is a shame, it's an easy fix too, but... I think the problem with gremlins in games is it can have, it's not just a problem in game, I think you can deal with it in game but mm-hmm. I think if it's long term like the barbarian the dumb barbarian guy ruining every plan we had for about literally three months of game mm-hmm. in game and real time um, you know like long term gremlin in a game can actually bleed into just getting irritated with players at least yeah. that guy was like he realised after the scene getting a bit too almost racist and stuff and he was about like mm-hmm. oh my I didn't think oh, I should have read the room ha 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 we're like yeah 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 you didn't need to read the room you could have you know when the guy was like dude come on that was enough <laughs> yeah but um, yeah so anyway yeah I, and I mean ultimately like you're saying I think the biggest and most problematic gremlins anybody will ever face are the ones that just come out the blue yeah because right. you've got no prior warning of it you've got no time to kind of think of a strategy you've got no time to figure out whether you'll be able to deal with it in game or whether you need to deal with it out with the game and then you've got the the other aspect of it which is if the person genuinely doesn't realize that there's an issue then do you necessarily want to go right hit pause in the game and then cut across and deal with it there and then because then you go right well are you then going to make that person upset, uncomfortable? Are you then going to stop them coming back to a game further down the line when it's something that you could deal with in game, or it's something that you could deal with afterwards with a quick two minute chat, or you know yeah. whatever? Now, in the case of nearly racist Steve or whoever you were playing with, then maybe you need to cut across the table for that one. That's maybe. I well, I mean, to be fair, he gave us fair warning. It's like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll, you know, because we we kind of introduced our characters, like mm-hmm. not we didn't all know each other in the mm-hmm. game, like the characters that is, but um, you know, but we gave each other an idea because we knew it was going to be one of these games. Like if it's like the only thing I can really compare it to is stuff like Cult Divinity Lost, which I think Call of Cthulhu, they like. I think there's a lot of hardcore themes and stuff, but. Most of their games aren't really that great. Even the Grindhouse games, there's minging stuff in it, but none of it's like really uncomfortable. Cult Divinity Lost, I got a whole suite of stuff like, the last Christmas we had, and it's all this mini, and dude, some of that stuff, I'm like, I don't know if I would run some of this. And that's saying a lot, by the way, because there's not a lot I wouldn't be uncomfortable I wouldn't be uncomfortable to run. But to be fair to the player, he gave us a bit of warning that he was going to kind of lean into his, his character's biases and stuff. So it wasn't like... But we just didn't. It just wasn't well. None of some of the other characters. Mm. The point. My point is, some of the other characters at the table also had similar viewpoints. Mm. Um, and a part of the game it was one of these more exploratory games where they wanted to have like, how can we do character arcs with this two, three person like session game? Sorry, and change and have these horrible experiences change their mind about their own. It was all. It was all very high bloody um, high. Um, what's it called? It's very high brow stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it gets away anyway. My point is, the guy gave us a warning, but I, t- I guess this is just sometimes what is going to happen, like you just said. The great uh, things will just pop out. I mean, especially if you're doing games that you're trying to be a bit more, um, 
that, that, that deal with more uncomfortable subjects, regardless of, of whatever the subject is, anything that could be considered like triggerable to folk. Um, there is a risk, inherent risk, that you do a, a character might cross that bound, and mm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's a hundred percent the player's fault either, because their boundaries or their lines might be different from everybody else. Mm-hmm. All I would say is the GM did a good job setting their expectations, but obviously this guy was more comfortable than the rest of us with their their characters' biases. Um, so yeah, interesting. I mean, it's a good. It was a good game. The poor guy mm. felt pretty bad about it, but. I was, it was good for us though we, we learned a bit from it and just to be a bit clearer about what what you know wh- how to ask each other about lines before we cross them really but mm-hmm. um, I mean it didn't say anything like particularly horrible but it just it was it, it, it kind of talking around it and you know like, you kind of knew it was, and he kept he had those two speeches that was a, I mean it was a bit of a problem player to some degree he kept monologuing and stuff and like Stop with the racist rants, or almost racist rants, because it wasn't actually pu- like blunt, bluntly racist. But it was. It's kind of like polite racism was his character. I think is the way to but, describe it. But but, but. <laughs> but with something like that as well, if you've if you've got somebody that's there that's skirting around whatever it is, then you're going. Surely then they know that they need to back away from this as quickly as they can because if they're not comfortable in saying it then they shouldn't be saying it well no not really I think it was probably a set up kind of prelude from the GM it probably didn't cover it because they're they're probably thinking that's part of the the shtick now it happened early on so it wasn't like we all had time to you know it wasn't like we were getting into these characters and you know it was all like introductory stuff followed by usually so we all had intros then the game started and it was individual five minutes or so role play ten minutes just you doing stuff with mm-hmm. the GM to give everybody more flavour about your character. That was really when it kicked in, so it was dead mm-hmm. early on. But um, but obviously that he thought the brief was to try and I think both show the nastiness of the character, particularly his guy was playing because it was a nasty dude. But um, it was to explore that and then obviously by the end of it, you know, it changed by mythos whatever it is, you know. But mm-hmm. whatever it is, ham. So I mean, the guy's fine. He was he wasn't particularly bad. It was just I think it just made people uncomfortable, which is fair enough. But, mm-hmm. but if you're going to try and do an edgy game, then that is going to happen if you've not got a group that's comfortable with that. It turns out we just didn't know exactly how far he was going to go. <laughs> but that's never been a problem after. So yeah, how quickly into the game did he realise and back away from it? Uh, it wasn't that long. It was after his scene, so probably like I'd say twenty minutes max because it was intros. And I'm including like the wee quick short intros. Our mm-hmm. intros is like our character name, what they do, and that was about it, a wee bit about them. And then mm-hmm. it was into the five minute pieces. So he was like the second guy to come up, if I remember right, second or third guy. And uh, so we'd only heard one person that was shyer that didn't do much with the role play. There's always someone, you know. So it was mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, and then it was like their character, yeah, they were second. And uh, they have much more to role play than the previous person, so it was a bit awkward. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so it wasn't long. It's just, but the GM is fair. Like we we finished all our intros and we just took a quick break because the food came and yep. And it just went. By the way, like it's not touch on that. <laughs> so the guy was fine. He felt bad, but whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, no. At least they actually kind of. I think it probably like, it's suppose. hard to remember. I mean, this was going back maybe a year and a half. It's hard to know now because we're in another new year, but um, I, I mean, it wasn't that long, and I suspect he probably figured it out because a lot of the choices he was having and things were getting. He was like, "Yep, yeah, that's cool." I remember that because I remember going, "Oh, oh," I think he realised. Um, mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, whatever. It's, it happens. It's going to happen in some games if you're playing something like Vampire, which people love, like that. They get really into Vampire. Um, or if you're doing something like cult, that stuff like that will happen with cult. You might have problem characters for sure. They're going to have those gremlins creeping in because mm-hmm. that game is built around absolutely broken and potentially abhorrent characters that you play. Um, cult, clearly, I think I think people are very into that. I think people mm-hmm. it's not got the LARP scene that Vampire has, but that's that's one that people really invest in. And I think because of the time period, mm-hmm. I think there's a bit of 
desensitisation that happens sometimes with some of the, the viewpoints of the time. And that's mm-hmm. all. And uh, that's somebody that is into Call of Cthulhu, that, particularly the guy I'm talking about. So for them, it might not have been as shocking. But I think they just... I, I think they got uncomfortable probably role playing it. So mm-hmm. took them long enough. But, I mean, 10 minutes isn't that long, I suppose. But if, yeah. if it was 10 minutes. It was, more, it was no more than, like, 30 minutes into the actual game from intro to... Mm-hmm. from that so yeah it wasn't that long but yeah mm-hmm. well I'm sure you've not really got much more I don't think you've got many other gremlins really that I, I again a lot a lot of things that I've seen it's all been it's all been pretty minor stuff it's been things like you've kind of like your, your barbarian type situation where you've had a character which has been there for a while which then means that from game one to game two to game three to game four whatever the individual character quirk is that's there is still giving you the same issue four games five games six games later so it's it's all very very similar to to your barbarian example albeit with a slightly different set of circumstances so rather than someone with a lack of intelligence making a poor decision which then results in conflict it's someone that's got an ego as a character that not the player the character just to clarify in case anybody thinks i'm pointing a finger at them um that then turns up makes a decision during a negotiation or whatever and then everybody starts pulling guns in each other or whatever so it's literally the same outcome pretty much the same start point and it's just a case of like throw a dice pick a different set of characteristics and then talk about that so Mm -hmm. i think really my only one that is of any note would be my big finale piece Mm -hmm. which is which is the name removed character because i can't think of any other way of describing it um so Basically, the long and the sort of short of this is that this was a character who was part of a long-term campaign, who was there for a good while, and the player themselves, to this day, I think, doesn't realise how disruptive some of the decisions the character was making was. And ultimately, I couldn't pin it down to a character's, or sorry, the character's characteristics. So basically what I'm meaning by that is that, like, in, like, just picking a random situation we were to, and I can't remember, well, this isn't what happened, so if we were to turn up to a place and to negotiate for, you know, whatever it was to the quest. So go away, find the magic key for picking something completely random to talk about, bring it back, and I will give you a thousand gold each. Then they, at that point, would start saying, ah, well, what happens if you give us 5,000 each and then make it worth our way? You know, and it it was unrealistic negotiations would appear. Mm -hmm. But then... A game later, it would be a case of you looked at the situation and you were pretty sure, right, this is going to result in combat. This is going to end up being close because of how many people there are. And then the character would start some form of impossible negotiation, which would then delay resolving what was going on and then the danger is more people are turning up and you're getting more and more and more outnumbered and then further down the line you would be in the middle of combat and the character would completely disappear and leave you behind even though you're (laughs) you've been together for however long and you're all part of a super team and Mm -hmm. one of the members of the super team is three miles down the road that way and there's just a puff of smoke as they're disappearing and it was lots and lots and lots of different things that always seemed to pop up 
and the gremlin had a, a very obvious issue with one of the other characters in the party and then the other problem that rose from that is the gremlin then didn't trust the leader of the group which then meant that decision making processes weren't happening as slickly as they should be and it was thrown up all sorts of issues just from start to finish yeah actually no I actually didn't know what you were talking about at first test because I did not understand it. I don't remember some of the examples you had but I know now oh, what I you're talking up. about I made up the yeah, magic well, key I was thinking well I forgot well I know the magic key wasn't but there's yeah. other stuff to do with negotiating and that yeah. Um, because I mean it's, I barely remember some of the games we had mm. this is going back a while yeah, I'm pretty sure I know exactly what you're talking about now but um, yeah in that case it was a character I would assume probably designed to c- create inter-party conflict that was the purpose of that I, don't, I do not believe that that was not part of the character's design because it was every step um, which actually I get and uh, know, knowing the player I don't think the character was designed to create conflict. I think the character was designed to be, quote-unquote, a lovable rogue. It wasn't lovable, and it wasn't a rogue. It was a spoiled child that needed punished. Yeah, so that gesture I did earlier, I think that's probably something you would do if you were a bit more hand... Was it re- very open, was it open gestures and stuff? Or Italian. Um I know, I, I still don't know about that though, just because, I mean, maybe, I suppose so, um, but at least, like, I would, if it was something designed, that character, you know, I would love to speak to the guy, I'm so curious now, I would actually, I will speak to him about it at some point, and that would be probably right, obviously it's a lovable rogue, but um, to me though, it did, it felt like very much an inter-party conflict kind of instigator, because mm-hmm. uh, from they, like, literally from, like, scene one having that person, I remember there being issues, like, mm-hmm. either them throwing up, you know, challenges for your your character, or what, mm-hmm. whatever it was, I can't remember, any, like, details anymore, because it was years ago, but... Um, yeah, it was it was every prompt along the way, and I don't I don't have problems with characters. I actually get it, and that could be interesting from a role play perspective. That could mm-hmm. be really interesting, but I think similar to the barbarian thing that I'd mentioned earlier, this is for a campaign that was running probably at least a year, maybe a year and a half at this point. I would I'm total guess. Um, so it was a long running weekly game that we had, had almost zero breaks, if if any, uh, for. And it was already, I think I was in a spot where I was working a lot as well. So I think the Saturday nights were my only time off as yeah. well. So it's so like literally I'm coming to play a game and relax with pals and after 80 hour work weeks and then I'm coming in and just getting shafted by both baddies and people in my own party. And I'm like, oh God. Um, and I suppose that's maybe up to us. Maybe we should have been saying to the guy, because it might not have meant it like that. And in which mm-hmm. case then we should have really been saying something, I suppose, or maybe even the GM. But um yeah, but there was problems literally, I think, every game with them. Because mm. I think my guy, my character, got to a point where I was like, see if you're two, your two guys don't get on, you're both out or something. Or someone was out. I can remember at least mm. thinking that. I can't remember if I've ever, ever done it. but Because um, I was just so bored of like babysitting a couple, mm-hmm. quite frankly, a couple of characters. But, I, you know, it's like, you know, I want to have fun with games, do you know what I mean? Whereas... That game was more immersive, more hardcore, which is why I suspect there was almost a bit of like, let's introduce that for more to try out some inter-party stuff. I don't think that was maybe the goal, but I think because it was an immersive game, Mm -hmm. I feel like that was maybe part of the vein that was there, but could be wrong. I mean, that's just my perspective of it after years of not doing it, so, or not being in that gate, like, Mm -hmm. that space with that character, but but the thing is, the character was pretty cool. That was the thing. I actually liked bits about the character and my dude managed to get through to that character and I started to be a bit less hateful towards that character as Jordan you know but then there was bits later on where I think he tried to nick something it was like some special item from a coven of witches and right in front of them he's like I'm a rogue I can do it and then literally they started kicking that living crap out of us and my barbarians only weakness not even a weakness, only thing that they're not resistant to when raging is psychic damage, which just turned out all three of the witches had psychic damage. So I was just like, oh, screw this, this sucks. 
and mm. uh, then I, I think the guy get I think that the gremlin character got absolutely beat down from it. It was mm. brutal. Like these guys were dealing a lot of damage. I'm sure it was one or two rounds from huge hit points but, to nothing. But again, this was another example of of why rather than you know a poor decision as a character or a character making a poor decision that it was a gremlin, because again it was I can't, I can't remember what level we were at this point. I think I've got five in my head. I think I had Pro- two attacks. Probably five. something, something along those lines, and it was. I I, th- I think you're underestimating with three of the witches. I'm sure there was more than that. It might have been four. I think I covered. But I don't this, know if it has to be three or if it's at least three. But yeah, and as well, we stumbled upon them. So this is like the third game into this particular like dungeon Part of crawl. The game, yeah. yeah. So we're already down in hit points oh, and that's right. yeah, because fights, we flipped up the rules so that a long rest this is a uh, 5e for anybody who's wondering what we're talking about so we flipped up the rules so that a long rest was a week and a short rest was a full day and things so that you're not regaining hit points as rapid I totally forgot about that which means that Aye. like but I, you yeah. don't get the chance to take the time and get your hit points back. We were either out of health potions or we never had any to begin with. So, again, like, third kind of proper encounter by this point. There's the three witches that we don't know are witches at this point, but you're 99.9% sure that they <laughs> are. I think there was more than three. I can't remember. And our characters basically went... Yeah, let's not go down there. Let's not go anywhere near that. Let's continue to sneak. Let's continue to move past I, and escape and get yeah. out of here. I think they'd seen us, though. This is a thing, but then they talked to us, but I think we might, unless no. the GM was wanting to force a fight on us, but um, I think we might have been able to negotiate it by giving... I think we had to give them something that they wanted and we could have left, unless the GM wanted us to fight them. That's See. the difference. Um, whereas then that, guy tried to, that character tried to nick the stuff back. And that's what caused the whole fiasco of that yeah. character dying, which was a shame because I think I think that was the longest they've had a character. I think after their main one died, because I think the next one or two, unless that was the third one, the second character lasted I think one game or something. It was mm-hmm. very quick. It was a shame because they, they they clearly loved that character, but they died pretty quick. Yeah, they so may have been the third one again. I think that's been the longest character to date, or the longest character at that time. Which was also another reason the fact that it was gremlin-y was a bit of an issue because it was at first like, ah, it's fine, we'll, we'll be dead in two games and then three games, four games, five games and you're like, oh, oh, this is, this is now a long-term, a long-term thing that we need to make our peace with. But literally go down, try to steal stuff off a group that has got you outnumbered and is much more powerful than you. And strangely enough, that decision resulted in a death so yeah and I ditched it too I ditched the body I'm like, I can't because I think yeah. I'd taken the most hit points in the whole campaign at that point because I think mm-hmm. every hit was full damage you know like mm-hmm. not max I mean just like I wasn't having any, anything which I'd yeah. pretty much been doing the entire campaign mm-hmm. Um, so yeah uh, but then I think that again might not have been as much of a problem mm-hmm. if we didn't have the kind of longer resting rules See, and stuff because yeah, I mean the, but, yeah. the other thing that I, I seem to remember and I might be misremembering this is that after that that whole situation and then it resolves in whatever way and we end up going on to the the next part of the escape or we then get out after that or however it resolved is that once the once the gremlin character was gone the player turned around to us afterwards and went and basically went you just left me there you didn't try and save me and, you, and you're going well we didn't want to die too mm-hmm. <laughs> you know but it was it was really really bizarre that they didn't seem to acknowledge how bad an idea it was and how mm-hmm. bad a piece of decision making it was. It was just you abandoned me, mm-hmm. and you're like, well, not really. But 
Yeah, but this is just a symptom of thing. As a player's good, that's the mm. thing. It was just it was down to a character, and that's. But this is this is going back a long time. I think if something like that happened in one of our game, like current games, I think it would probably be quite different. It certainly would be for me. I just be like I. I think I've said to the GM. If I get characters like this is more like the last set mm. of things that happened in that campaign, but if I ever get characters like X X X and X and that character was included, um, then they're not getting in the group. So basically, get, make a new character because I'm not my my character would not accept that sort of silliness in but, the group because we've had a few cases of this sort of thing. But again, that was that was another kind of bizarre thing that happened in that, which was your your character's abilities as a leader kind of were nerfed and nerfed pretty That's fine. That's just, severely. But then we know that and that was the way the GM decided to do it. But to be fair, like if we were, I think we're coming back to that at some point in the future, mm. near future. So, but if that becomes a problem, I'll just retire the character because I'd rather enjoy and actually get a proper level up with, it, with my guy in that game. Um, then need to be sent through all that mm. stuff because it just wasn't fun, especially because I was so busy. So at the time, it was even more frustrating because I had very little patience because of other things going on. And then it was like, right, I can't wait for a game. And it's like this this sort of babysitting for, for campaigns. Mm-hmm. So it was a bit much. But yeah, so I think maybe the thing to wrap up for this is then, well, what, what do you do? What is the best thing to, I kind of touched on, but what do you do with a, a gremlin character then? Don't feed them after midnight. Don't feed them after. Don't water them yeah. for whatever reason. It turns them into big gremlins. I don't. Um, I've, I've, I've never seen the film, so. Oh my god! Just, you've not seen many <laughs> like pop culture films, have you? You've not seen the Matrix either, I think. No. Nope. Um, but or Alien, which I think. No. Nope. Nah. Nope. Although you played the game of Alien, though, yep. and did good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would probably say the main thing is I think I think the best thing to do is just talk to that player, not that character, because I we tried and I particularly tried to resolve some of the gremlin characters we've had in either shared games mm-hmm. or in others by appealing like doing the role play packs and you maybe the person. But I find generally problem characters are more because the player behind them enjoys role play and then get it doubles down on it, mm-hmm. but then it makes it difficult to actually address it via role play because they're too busy focusing on their antics. Yeah. Um. I would just say, speak to the player, speak to the GM. It's no worth. Like we had months or weeks and weeks, sorry, of that character being a huge hemorrhoid the whole time, <laughs> and it did. It, it, it really put me off portions of the game. Yeah. I wasn't blaming I mean, the dude. I was blaming myself just being short on, you know, I was fatigued is what I would say. I've just been very fatigued. So I just thought hmm. it was maybe me. Um. And, but as a way to fix it, full stop, I would say. Yeah, I mean, as well, like, it, during that sort of time period when it was happening, at the end of every game, I was, I was pretty much saying, it'll, it'll fizzle out, and then the next game, it'll fizzle out, and then the next game, it'll f- you know, and it, it just didn't ever seem to happen. Right, okay. Um, so, you know, part of me was going... It's a new character, finding feet, what to do a bit of role play, what to kind of establish themselves because character number one was part of the original party and died. Character number two didn't last long enough to actually... Well, there was problem kind of, gremlin elements, I think, in that one, even there was, thinking yeah. about it. Probably bled into the new guy, to be fair, because it just made a new guy after, like, one game. <laughs> I, yeah, good, yeah, so it's like, yeah, yeah, it was a bit, not quite kind of Kaiser soze but, you know, yeah. it's kind of, I've not seen that either, by the way, I just know the term, if anybody's interested, which I don't think they are. Um, but, yeah, it was kind of, I think you're right, it was just kind of, sort of, I wanted to do that with this, so what we'll do is I'll take 90% of that, transfer it over and tweak this and this, right, that's good to go and fire it out. But again, just talk talking to either whoever it is or the GM, DM, whatever, it, again, it'll solve most of the issues with anything that we ever talk about here. Strangely enough, talking about it is going to solve most of the issues. Um, we probably end up saying that at least once or twice an episode. Yeah, and I would also add to that though, don't be afraid to bring that up. And if you yeah. are, bring it up to the GM because it's not worth all the yeah. issues. It's just, it just, it, it can put, I've seen it put off people that wanted to play games, this mm-hmm. sort of stuff, 
who might have actually really enjoyed to join a campaign but didn't because of stuff like that. Um, I've had people not want to come to some of the sessions that I run because the group themselves are super boisterous. I've been tempering them over time a bit and they're a lot better than they were six months ago. But I've said to them flat out, uh, particularly the problem players at the table were player, I think there's only really one, um, that they're probably the reason that some, because they want people to join and I've said well, they can but they don't want to well that you're playing this sort of character or getting that sort of level of drunk at games so mm -hmm. um, and it's not comfortable but it's better than having people join and being too scared to not leave and then hating the game and then mm -hmm. not wanting to do the hobby I'd much rather somebody came for a one shot like that whole yeah. gremlin they did Rogue guy we're talking about. You see if that was a concept for a wee one shot or a wee two or three games worth. Cool. Yeah, you just kind of um, But because this was a long term hardcore game that was already pretty brutal all the way up to this point, it was just another thing we did not need. Yeah, you didn't um, need the extra aggro and you didn't need the extra aggro from someone that you were expecting slash. Everybody to else back in the game up. was already <laughs> aggro. Like they wanted mm -hmm. to kill us. Everybody, including friendlies, I think almost. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, but yeah. So I think that's the way to solve it. It would be. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just, pretty, pretty just say let's maybe change it. You can word it nice, but you can just basically tell them let's either modify that character or get a new one. <laughs> that's what I would suggest. That at least or at least just change a bit of backstory or change it. You can mm -hmm. literally modify a small bit and that the character is no longer a problem. Mm -hmm. um, just that what all I've seen is the life the longer you don't bring it up, the bigger chance it becomes what you would consider a problem player, even if it is just a character. Mm -hmm. But it, you, you start to get frustrated at the table rather than just in game. Yeah. Um, and I've seen the inter party conflict happen and it works. But it only works from what I've seen when people are up for it and, you know, you can read the room. I usually yeah. bring problem characters at the start to wind people up and kind of get, break the ice and then mm. I start just complying with the, the rest of the group and following yeah, yeah. orders. Because <clears throat> it's just, it's an icebreaker, it's a personality setter and then I can shift them into something that's yeah. going to be amenable to the group rather yeah. than a, a hindrance to them, I suppose. Yeah, and again, like we've mentioned at the start and things that if if you're there and if you've got like conflict within the party or somebody's kind of going rogue, making their own decisions, mm -hmm. or you know whatever it is, like stop, pause, take a step back and go. If it's somebody you know well, then you're able to answer this question easier, which is right: is this this person that's being disruptive or? Mm -hmm. Are they trying to do something with a character and it's not quite clicking with everybody else or with even if it's just you, if it's not quite clicking or is there something else going on, chances are it's probably the gremlin aspect of it. It's probably not going to be the person just being just out and out disruptive or passive aggressive or whatever. Um and if but, it is, we refer to the problem players episode, which I think mm -hmm. probably covers the other half of that. So, mm -hmm. but yeah. yeah, well, cool. Well, that's I think everything we had to say about problem or gremlins and games. Um, so I throw over to you for the socials before we wrap up. Yep. So if you want to answer the questions we gave you at the start, if you want to give us stories about your particular gremlins if you want to tell us that gremlins is a terrible term for it and that you've got something better then there's the comments underneath on youtube you could fire something to us on facebook there's x remember not to say twitter you're welcome elon um there's instagram if you want to fire us something through there and there's discord as well and there should be a question and or poll on spotify as well well, cool. Well, that's it from us here at the Beginner's Handbook. So I just want to say thanks again for listening and or watching. And it's bye from me. And me as well. Mm -hmm.